Hi, good morning, good morning. I'm Jo Bannon. I'm an artist working in performance and live art, and I'm based in Bristol in the UK. And the title of this keynote is We Are Fucked. <laughs> so, fair warning, there's going to be a bit of swearing. The title comes from a new project I'm making with the same title, and much of this talk is borrowed from a talk I gave at In Between Time Festival in Bristol in the UK at the start of this year. It was in response to the provocation, how can performance and live art unfuck the world? And it is not laziness that returns me to that talk or that question, but necessity, because it has been on my mind ever since because I think that at this precise moment in time, we are at best a bit fucked, personally, politically, globally. And I think artists instinctively want to talk to and make work in response to the challenges that the world proposes. But when I try to answer this question, I falter. I don't think I have an answer. And if I do, then I don't know where to begin. So I'll start from where I am. Maybe the best I can do is to try to situate myself before I begin. I am talking to you this morning as an artist, by which I mean art making is the best strategy I've found so far for meaning, for how to live and how to change my perception and maybe in subtle ways the world around me. I am a cisgendered heterosexual woman. I am white, from a working class family, born to a first generation Irish immigrants who moved to the UK in the mid 70s. To a mother who was threatened by a man on the bus while she was heavily pregnant, because when he heard her Irish accent, he presumed she was a terrorist working for the IRA. And to a father who bore his poverty, the shame of his poverty, so strongly that he was the perfect candidate to fall for Thatcher's rhetoric of the hard-working individual whom he helped vote into power in 1979. And these are my words about them, and they might tell it differently. I was raised Catholic, and at now am best agnostic. I've only been to Australia once before, so my grasp on Australian culture and politics is a bit limited. I identify as disabled, and whilst I sometimes do and sometimes don't use this term, I always do so reluctantly, because I don't like the dis bit, the definition of, its, of something by its lack of being something else. I say these things to try to locate myself, to make explicit my personal and political landscape, to attempt to unearth the bias I hold and the bias I am as yet unaware of, the wounds I have inherited, lived, and have not had to bear. The privileges I hold and the privileges denied. I start by saying these things, both to say where I can speak from and where I can't. So I can only start here, from this body, in this place, here with you. And when I say only, I don't really mean it because I think it's the best place to start, with the idea that the personal is political and the political is personal, and if you're going to throw shit at me, then I'm going to take it personally. And if you're going to tell me that my family aren't welcome in my home country, then I'm going to take it personally. And if you're going to tell me you can do whatever you want to me, you can grab me by my pussy, then I'm gonna take it personally. Because there's a big elephant in the room a big question floating around. How can art unfuck the world? And I think it probably can't. As Dan Savage, the gay American advice columnist, re might reply when answering a question such as, how can I gain my sister's trust after sleeping with her husband? He might say, you can't. That pooch is screwed. <laughs> and it can't be unscrewed. The world can't be unfucked. But whilst we're on the subject of pussies and sex and screwing, I'd like to talk about desire and penetration. Because in answer to the question, how can art unfuck the world, 
I think desire is the best chance we've got. I watched James Baldwin on YouTube the other day talking about desire. He said, if you can't love, you're dangerous because you've no way of learning humility, no way of learning that other people suffer, no way of learning how to use your suffering and theirs to get from one place to another. In short, you fail the human responsibility, which is to love each other. How to get from one place to another. From this version of the world to the alternatives. It's not possible to undo, to unfuck. No, not backwards, he says, but onwards. Maybe the only way to, is to follow our desire. To meet penetration, whether it be personal, psychological or political, with our own acts of penetration. To penetrate back through desire. I would like to propose using desire as a weapon. And when I say desire, I should clarify that right now I'm talking specifically about female sexual desire because that's where I can talk from, and if I'm honest, it's one of the voices I don't get to hear very often. A subject as wide and complex and astounding as the nerve system of the human clitoris, which has somehow often been sequestered to being defined by simply what it is not, male desire. It is a void, a negative space, a place to be filled, in the same way we are misled to believe by biology textbooks that the vaginal canal is the inverse shape of a penis. It is not. Imagine the cries of negligence if we were still lying about what the heart or liver or brain looked like. So this is what I'm currently thinking about and what I'm thinking of making work about and how I might attempt to unfuck the world. So far, it only manifests as the working title of a project I'm beginning called We Are Fucked. <laughs> I don't know what it is yet, aside from a set of ideas and questions and some pretty weird Freudian dreams. <laughs> but what I can say for now is that the title feels important because it holds for me my thinking about a set of complex issues which start from female biology and desire and reach out to ideas of power, political and personal penetration, and the messy business of sex. I know I'm interested in exploring the internal and external experiences of female desire, sexuality, and their link to neoliberalism. I want to investigate the intersecting fields of biography, psychology, biology, and politics to interrogate the modern feminist experience of personal and political penetration. Because I'm pretty sure that if I don't have agency over my own body or agency in my own bedroom, I'm not going to have much agency out there in the world. I'm trying to question how to use this micro lens of the personal to reverberate with the macro lens of the political. How to give voice. How to hold space in a theatre, in the anonymity of the internet, in living rooms, for people to ask, what do we desire? How do we shift from objects of desire to subjects of our own desires? How are we fucked? What penetrates us sexually, bodily, politically, socially? And perhaps most importantly, how do we penetrate back? That artwork is still in its early stages. It is not yet undressed, if you'll allow me to exhaust this metaphor. <laughs> so instead, I'll close by talking about another artwork. Recently, I went to a gallery in Bristol to see an exhibition of the work of the female black British artist, Libana Himid. I stand in front of a brass plaque, polished, solitary, stretching across the expanse of the gallery wall. To decipher the engraving, you have to approach it, to move your body along the length of its reflective surface to read what it says. It reads... He said I looked like a painting by Murillo as I carried water for the Ho Gang, just because I balanced the bucket on my head. The plaque is beautiful, all gleaming brass, luxurious, regal, 
like the gilt frames of those 18th century Murillo paintings, which depict a European ideal of slavery and still hang in stately homes across the UK. Like the plaques you can find all over historic buildings in Bristol, my hometown, which were once the homes and marketplaces of merchants and slave traders. The plaque is beautiful. The plaque is biting, sharp, acerbic, acidic, elegant. It calls the reader to account in a way that feels live and unrelenting. It holds its ground and destabilizes yours. Its aesthetic and its content are so ba tightly bound up together, the choice to use the same mechanisms of oppression, the brass, the wealth, the gallery, to bite back. It feels like a beautiful, elegant, forceful fuck you. To use the same tools which have fucked you over to make an artwork that fucks you back. Because I've been asked a big question here, how can art unfuck the world? And the best response I can come up with is that we reclaim and use our desire to penetrate back. No, art can't unfuck the world, but it can fuck it right back. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>